Hello and welcome to DI Will See. Today we're working on the kitchen and you are going to need the following items. So it's time for another massive project. I'm working on the kitchen this time. It's the kitchen counters. I already did the island. I shall. This is what the island turned out as. I wanted it to be different than the rest of the kitchen. I painted the cabinets. I still have that one to do. Everything was this really ugly orangey oak color. So I decided I wanted something darker that would match the bar. And I painted that. I'm still gonna do the trim kind of to tie the island into it. And the island I obviously painted a different color and distressed and the top I did with, um, I sanded it down and I did a metallic copper um, and I put some, some polyurethane uh, texturing under it, painted over it with the copper so that I got this kind of warped look and then I put um, more epoxy over the top of it and it says four coats of epoxy on this and it's um, all over the top and in the sink and on the sides there and I let it cure for seven days and now it's amazing and shiny and perfect so now I'm doing the rest of the countertops and as I said I want them to be different than that because that's just too much of that bronze copper color it's supposed to be an accent so these I'm doing in a stone-ish um, texture with a cement. This is the plan with feather cement. And I am cutting out the sink and getting rid of the faucet. I'm replacing it with this bad boy. And this is the part of the project that makes my husband very nervous. And I'm not gonna lie, I've never done it, so I'm kind of nervous too, but I'm gonna do it. Um, the sink is a little smaller than this um, actual sink, but um, the, the cover is a lot larger, so it'll, it should fit in there really nicely, actually. Um, yeah, so that's, that's today's project. So now I'm going to get everything cleaned up, and then I'm going to cut this hole out. Uh, or first, I've got to turn the water off. <laughs> Shut the water off down here, remove the faucets, cut the hole out, and go from there. The hole has been cut, and the counter is lightly sanded. I just want to say, cutting a hole in this effing countertop was a nightmare. I thought I was going to be brilliant and do it with tools that we had and do it by hand. Two and a half hours later, I had made like a slip, and so I finally broke down and made a trip to Lowe's. <laughs> Got a, a jigsaw with a, with a porcelain blade and a um, laminate countertop blade. <laughs> and it's still in work. In the end, it took a sledgehammer. So it's not as perfect as it should be. Here's some, some minor damage and some cracks that weren't there before but it's fine because it's going to get covered in a cement coating and um i've reinforced the whole bottom so that it's going to support the weight of the sink which sits over it so you're not going to see anything and the sink's going to be adhered to the countertop so it's fine it's all good just so you know bring a sledgehammer to the party <laughs> done with this kitchen makeover and this is one of my favorite things this built-in which I actually did not really care for when we moved in because it was that orange oaky kind of color and 
you know, it was just ugly. So I painted it to match the island and um, just kind of gave it that white rustic feel. And the only copper that I've really added on the inside, I painted the inside as well, but I tried to make it look aged. So I just used a brush the whole time. That's one of the keys, I think, at least to me, to aging something or to make something look distressed. It's using a brush instead of a roller because you want those imperfections. So I used a brush on the inside, um, just chalk paint, and then I covered it with um, polyurethane. And then I used the copper here on these edges and um and then just left the the windows unfortunately i couldn't do it in here because it's on the other side of the glass so unless i wanted to deconstruct the front part but i'm actually fine with it because it's still it's supposed to look imperfect but to, to me it is absolutely perfect i love this so much and i got these little knobs here at hobby lobby and these are amazing <laughs> I love them so much and they add the perfect touch to this. So I'm just going to put the last one in now and yeah, it's perfect. I'll show you the rest of the kitchen. We have, I finished the, the rest of the, the countertops. Um, I put an epoxy over this. I didn't want to originally because I wanted the texture, but it's just got a couple layers of epoxy and it still has the texture, so I'm actually fine with it. And it looks pretty. And I put the new sink in. Um, the old sink is in the trash, obviously. And it matches the island with the epoxy. And here is this part. I have to, we still have to put the stove back in. Um, but it was pretty simple to do. I took pictures of the whole process. Um, the only part is here, it takes this stuff, um, well, I mean, it's hard right now, like I can touch it, but if I put anything heavy on it, it'll leave an indentation. So uh, I'm actually not sure how long it takes before. My husband said it could take up to a month. It's, um, it's been two days since we put this down. It's been almost a month since we put it down on here and it still leaves indentation. It's been, I think, three weeks. So I'm hoping that eventually it hardens enough so I can put something heavy on it. Right now, we just put stuff, um, you know, like this right here it has a soft bottom. So I'm putting just heavier stuff on here for now or like the coffee pot I put on a, on a cushion. Um, so, uh, yeah, if anybody knows the answer <laughs> how long it takes this stuff to cure to the point that I can put something heavy on it without having um, a ring, you know, I could set a heavy coffee cup on it and it'll have, it'll have the circle when I pick it up. So, oh, and I did also do, because when we moved in, the people who had done it made this little, um, kind of a, a Thing that matched the counter and was just sitting on top so I decided to make it the same copper as the island and it came out awesome and this right here this happened because I didn't let the paint totally dry before I poured the epoxy on so it came out with this freaking cool texture on it first I put epoxy onto the, the surface to give it some waves and then I painted it with the copper and I didn't let the copper paint dry before I pulled, poured the final layer of epoxy. And this is how it came out. And I'm so happy with this. So I think this is one of the coolest things. So that's going to go somewhere on this kind of top once it can support the weight because that thing is friggin' heavy. And yeah, just in case you wanted to know, this is what I was trying to, this thickness is what I was trying to saw through with a handsaw. So that makes me a dumbass sledgehammer's the way to go. So I just thought I'd show you the updates. It's not quite done. I ordered hardware for the cabinets because um, I don't want to scratch them up by trying to open them by hand. So I ordered this beautiful stainless steel hardware and I'm probably going to paint a little bit of copper on each piece. And then the only thing that will be left to do in here is replace the oven, which <laughs> expensive. So we might not do that immediately. 
and the table. I have to, that's going to be a whole other project, this dining room table. So that's it. In case you're wondering how I am getting the handles even when I'm putting them on on the doors, um, I'm using a piece of tape that goes exactly from the top to the bottom, the lines, and then I measure out the the middle section, obviously tape measure marker, measure out the middle, and then the exact length that I need here, and then make sure that it's it's even over the middle. So I needed um, five and an eighth of an inch um, total. So I went based off the middle, and then to make sure that it's in the exact same spot. On the next one, instead of measuring it all over again, I just use this as a template. So take the piece of tape off and then put it exactly here. And then one quick measurement to make sure it's directly in the center. And it makes it so much easier to do the drawers. Um, unfortunately, a lot of them are a different size, so I have to do this process multiple times, but it makes sure that I get a nice even um, on, on all of them. So just a tip. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.